Main engine start, six engines up and running. And lift off. The first component of the International Space Station in orbit. The International Space Station has been in orbit for more than two decades and is fast approaching the end of its designated life. But have you ever wondered how NASA intends to deorbit the gigantic space lab? Well, the space agency has recently revealed its plan to simply crash the space station into the atmosphere. But how do they plan to achieve this without catastrophic damage to the Earth? Well, we've got all that covered in today's video, where we explore how NASA plans to crash the ISS. NASA has laid out plans to deorbit the International Space Station in the most spectacular, fiery fashion. But why now? The International Space Station has served as mankind's longest standing outpost off-world, being in orbit for over two decades, and serving as a hub for scientists and astronauts from all over the world. Visits to the International Space Station have provided scientists with an unprecedented understanding of the effects of microgravity on human activity. But the space station we see orbiting our planet today wasn't built in a single go, but is the product of over 42 separate launches, taking each section of the ISS into orbit for assemblage, being nearly the length of a full-sized football field. The International Space Station weighs over 900,000 pounds and remains the heaviest man-made object in space. But thanks to microgravity, the six-bedroom floating laboratory weighs next to nothing while in space. But despite its awesome features, the International Space Station is aging and fast approaching the end of its designated lifespan. Also, being in space for over 20 years, the ISS is constantly at risk of being impacted by micrometeorites, where any amount of damage could mean disaster for those on board. Despite also being in great working condition, the ISS can't stay in orbit forever, even if it were to be decommissioned and abandoned. This is because the station requires a near constant supply of fuel and propellant to stay in orbit. If the fuel were to run out without any resupply, the lab would succumb to the effects of Earth's gravity and fall to the surface. So basically, if gravity has anything to say about it, what goes up must surely come down. It is simply a matter of when and how. And this is where NASA's plan to deorbit comes in. NASA and its partner agencies in over 15 countries constantly evaluate the viability of the station and its longevity. The agencies are still confident that the station will remain functional well into 2030, but a previous analysis has it that the station will begin to lose viability in 2028. But NASA has gone ahead in making plans to develop a designated spacecraft capable of steering the International Space Station into what has been termed a controlled destruction in Earth's fiery atmosphere when its time is up. The agency revealed its plans in March of 2022 during the 2024 federal budget request reading at the White House. The agency's budget of $27 billion has allocated $180 million for what they call the development of preliminary plans for a new space tug vehicle, capable of deorbiting the ISS safely over the ocean at the end of its operational life in 2030. In a subsequent press conference, NASA's human spaceflight chief Kathy Luders stated that the initial estimate for developing the new deorbit tug spacecraft would cost upwards of $1 billion, with this price tag being a simple estimate which could very well increase as the years go by. The agency is currently waiting on approval from Congress to kickstart the developmental process, but the real question is, how will this new tug spacecraft work to bring down the ISS? Well, according to NASA, the new tug won't be doing all the work in steering the ISS to its death but is actually aimed to supplement the already existing deorbit capabilities of the space station. Existing protocols for safely bringing down the ISS solely depend on controlled engine burns by the robotic progress vehicles provided by the agency's partner, Russia. Russia has been providing the Progress Vehicle for resupply missions to the ISS for almost the entire duration of the station's life. With more than 130 successful flights over the decades, the Russian Progress was the perfect spacecraft to deorbit the International Space Station. The initial plan was to use the Progress spacecraft to slowly steer the space station, lowering its altitude down into the planet's upper atmosphere. In this case, the spacecraft wouldn't bear the entire weight of the ISS, as the service module thrust on the station would be used as well for the controlled descent. In the preliminary report for using the Russian spacecraft, NASA officials stated that the deorbit plan would require at least three Progress spacecraft with a possible fourth spacecraft from Northrop Grumman, the Cygnus spacecraft 
to be precise. The spacecraft would lower the ISS to a precise altitude such that when re-entry begins, the trajectory of the station is more predictable, and debris from the burn can be tracked to a remotely populated area of the Pacific Ocean. Much of the deorbiting process will be up to the powerful destructive force of Earth's atmosphere where a good percentage of the station will be burned up before splashing into the ocean. This was the initial protocol that was dependent on the Russian spacecraft alone, but as NASA has revealed, the agency intends to have its own deorbit capabilities as a means of redundancy and be able to better aid and track the safe landing of the station. In a statement, the agency said, As you've seen in the past and over this last year, us having these redundancies has been very, very important for both ourselves and our partners. And so, having a US deorbit vehicle is another key linchpin in our space operations and deorbit strategy of the ISS. The statement was referring to the recent incidents of coolant leaks that have plagued Russian vehicles docked on the ISS on two separate occasions in the last year, the first of which was a coolant leak from the Soyuz spacecraft on December 14, 2022. The spacecraft was docked at the International Space Station and sprung a leak, causing it to lose all of its coolant. The incident forced cosmonauts Sergei Prokopyev and Dmitry Petelin of the Russian Federal Space Corporation, Roscosmos, to cancel a spacewalk designated for that day. The leak was detected less than two hours before the team was scheduled to leave the station for a six-hour spacewalk around the station. Both cosmonauts were already in pressurized spacesuits and had begun the process of depressurizing the airlock before the leak was detected. Both men simply repressurized the airlock and proceeded back into the station. The leak continued for three hours before all the coolant was completely gone, and they received the all clear. Russia attributes the leak to damage to the coolant system resulting from a micrometeoroid strike. The second incident followed less than two months later in February 2023, when a Russian Progress vehicle docked on the ISS sprung a leak of its own. The leak, which was detected to have originated in the coolant system of the spacecraft, caused the mission control to halt any future use of the vehicle. The Progress 82 cargo, which was on a resupply mission to the space station, was declared unfit for further use. Russia attributed this leak to extreme influence probably incurred during launch, but since Progress vehicles are designed to completely burn up in Earth's atmosphere during re-entry, engineers will be unable to examine the vehicle to determine the cause of the leak. In addition to the reduced levels of trust in the Russian Progress vehicle as a result of the unexplained coolant leaks, other factors have contributed to NASA's decision to develop its own deorbit vehicle, one of the major reasons being Russia's current invasion of Ukraine, which has severed much of the country's space partnership mostly with the European Space Agency, which is a culmination of several European countries. As a result, Russia has voiced its intentions to leave the ISS partnership a lot earlier than anticipated, probably at some point after 2024. The country aims to build its very own station outpost in low Earth orbit where it would have full control and autonomy of the station's operations. Following the budget's approval from Congress, NASA intends to begin the development of its new deorbit tug spacecraft as soon as possible. The agency also aims to support the European Space Agency's life-hunting ExoMars rover, which was supposed to launch atop a Russian rocket. But since the ESA cut ties with Russia, they have begun plans to develop their very own launch vehicle. The plans, however, still remain unclear. NASA's budget plans also include an $8.1 billion allocation for the agency's Artemis program, which aims to set up a crewed lunar outpost on the Moon by 2030. The Artemis programs will kick off in 2024, with Artemis II sending astronauts on a trip around the Moon and Artemis III will put man back on the Moon for the first time in over 50 years. Artemis IV, which has been slated for 2028, will begin NASA's Gateway Station on the Moon, building man's first lunar outpost. So, while the end of the International Space Station may be in sight, NASA has a long list of other exciting projects to kick off before then. We simply can't wait to see it all play out in real time.